So today we remember those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice and we take our freedom for granted so easily, don't we? And we just go about our daily business. Maybe we appreciate it slightly more after COVID, but generally we don't realize in our daily lives what, how precious freedom is. And so today we remember those who have made that freedom possible. And let's pray. Lord, we thank you for those who have gone before in previous generations and even in this generation as well, who have given everything in order for peace, in order for security, in order for freedom. And we pay tribute to them. We thank you for their courage, Lord. We thank you for their sacrifice. And today we also remember those who are serving to continue that peace. And we think especially of Joseph and Sam as they work their daily lives in readiness for working for our protection. And so we pray you bless them, support them, others to be known to us as well that serve, that serve in the armed forces. So we pray that you'll sustain them, that you'll strengthen them, that you'll encourage them. And we thank you for them, Lord Jesus. Most of all, we thank you that you laid down your life so that we could be free spiritually. We could be free eternally. So today, Lord, we worship you. We lift up your mighty name. And we honor you above all others. Amen. 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 Well, welcome this morning. Um, and we're going to worship God now and take a seat. Uh, we've got a few more seats in the house because we want to give everyone the chance to be in church. But if you're online, you're equally welcome. Thanks for joining this morning. And let's stand again, shall we? As we, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> stand again and let's worship God together. Yeah, so great. So yeah, Remembrance Day. And it's also good. This first song we're going to sing about is what Mark just said about being thankful to Jesus Christ uh, for him laying down our lives for us that, so that we could be free. Okay, let's worship him. Ashes in the wind. 
so long to my old friends. Burden and bitterness, can't just keep it moving. You ain't welcome here. From now on until I walk the streets go, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. The wayward son has found his way back home. You picked me up, you turned me around, you placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because He healed my heart and changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior. I thank God. And hell lost another one. I am free. And I am free. And I am free. Yay! Hell lost another one. I am free. And I am free. And I am free. turn to the person next to you or in front of you behind you say hi to them and just tell them one thing that you're thankful to God about just one thing that you're thankful to God about <laughs> you know we um on Remembrance Day we realize that a lot of people lost their lives in battle and in Christians, as Christians, we face a spiritual battle. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and, you know, there's these other, all these bad guys, you know, the devil and his minions. And, um, and uh, it's great for us to know that God is the victor and he causes us to be the victors as well and that the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain root. When as I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees. With my hands lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sink through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When I see the cross, 
And God, you see the empty tomb. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees. With my hands lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs to you. And almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. But nothing can stand against the power of our God. The almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees. My hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees. With my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Thank you, Lord. And all the earth 
will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will ache. your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord, is what we've just sung this morning. And I want us to have that at the back of our minds as we enter into a time of prayer. Because we are coming to a great God. He is awesome. He is mighty. He has won the battle on our behalf. So we come boldly. We come with joy. We come knowing that we have the victory. Amen. But before we go into prayer, I have a couple of praise reports. So, um, the first praise report is that Kelly is praising God for an unexpected change in David's work, which means that he's had an opportunity to take the kids and go and spend time with them at his parents' place. Because she said during COVID, that wasn't possible. And she said something that is so amazing. She said treasure the time we get with with family so she's thanking god for that opportunity amen we are also praising god for we genie where's jim where's she oh do you know yesterday when i got this news i was so excited oh sorry i should have taken this off totally um we know andrew yes he's got a job on staff at hillsong church Oh, what a breakthrough. God is faithful, isn't he? She is so excited, isn't he? <laughs> and we rejoice with her this morning. Hallelujah. And during the week, Louise had said to thank God for her permanent job. And we thank God for that as well. Do you know what this means? Church, when you trust God and you put your faith in him, he comes through. Yes. Amen? Yes. Let us never forget that he always comes through. Hallelujah. So now we're going to pray. And you know the song we sang about almighty fortress, the battle belongs to you. You know, let us come to God knowing the battle is his. It's not our strength. It's not our ability. It is him. Amen. And the, the, the scripture God quickened in my heart this morning was, he is the high priest. Jesus is the high priest of our salvation. So let us go to him and just hand things over to him. Amen. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hand over Kelly again because she wants prayer 
for her patience. That's amazing, isn't it? She wants to pray for her pa patience. Libby is also asking for continued prayer for healing for Billy, who had surgery to remove a brain tumor. Um, the family is not a Christian family, so she's praying that God would just reveal himself to the whole family, reveal his, his loving kindness, his peace, his presence, and his healing. Hallelujah. Cherie is praying, asking for prayer for her whole body to be healed. Amen. And we will stand with her and pray this morning. Um, William is also asking for prayer for his friend William's brother, Kenneth. So I think last week he was here in a wheelchair at the back. I don't know if anybody saw him. All right. Yeah. So we'll pray for him this morning that God will really touch him. Amen. And, you know, we are aware that there's so many people asking for prayer for healing, asking for prayer for strength for their bodies. And I want us as a church to press in and to claim that victory that Christ has already won for us. Hallelujah. It is not by our might or our, by our power, but it is just by believing and trusting in the scripture that says that by his stripes, you are healed. Past tense. Amen. You are healed. So just this morning, open your heart, lift up your hands if you want to, and say, Lord, I thank you that I am healed. My body is healed because you pay the price for me. All right? Let us just trust God and stand with our brethren this morning who are wanting prayer. Hallelujah. You can stand up if you want. And let's really press into the presence of God with this. Okay? Hallelujah. Oh, I didn't see it. I'm sorry. Right? right right yeah we will do that we will do that we are a family aren't we hallelujah mm -hmm. do you mind standing church let's just stand and just be in battle mode and let's say devil enough of this enough of this we are pressing into what the price that christ has already paid for us it is not us to to sort of die for our own um conditions of sicknesses the bible says that he himself bore our sicknesses in his body in jesus name so let's just pray for these brethren hallelujah father oh pray as if it was your brother your sister your child oh father Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Father, this morning we ask for that oil, that healing balm of Gilead, Father, to just flow, flow down, Father, all over this body, Father, in Jesus' name. For those who are here who have not even said what they're going through, Father, you know the needs in every heart, Father. For those online, who are crying out to God for a breakthrough. This morning, Lord, we come to you and we say thank you that Jesus took stripes in his body for us, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that because of that, we can stand knowing that we are healed, that we have those things that you have already promised us. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you that we can come boldly for grace. We can come boldly, Father. Oh, Lord, to be touched boldly, Father, to be embraced boldly, Father, to be healed because that is your will for us, Father, to be well, for our bodies to be well in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that when Jesus was here, your word says he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for you were with him. I thank you. Your word says that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in their midst, Father. So we know you are here. So this morning, Lord, we thank you that you are here to heal. You are here to deliver. You are here to set free. You are here to break chains. You are here, Father, to answer questions. You are here to bring solution. So, Father, we open our hearts to you and we say, Lord, Lord, speak to us, Father. Speak to our hearts. Touch our bodies. Make us whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood that you shed. Thank you for your love that was poured, 
poured out as a sacrifice, Father. And Lord, we thank you that all our prayers come up before you as a sweet smelling savor, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do take your seats. Thank you. There's such power in the prayer house, isn't there? Yeah, we just need to keep pressing into that and, and allowing God to move through us as he uh, brings his miracle working power. And don't forget to let us know the praise reports that you have. Um, some of you will have been given a few things on your seats. Um, uh, this, if you're new to church in the last weeks or so, we, we'd just like to uh, have some contact with you a bit more other than on a Sunday. And if you're happy to let us have some details, fill in one of these new to church cards and uh, you tear off one part and keep our details and we keep your details so that you know that there's a contact there if you have any needs, if you have... Uh, just a desire to know more about what we're doing here and what we're all about. Um, and also, there are envelopes on the seats. We're the, at the moment, we haven't been taking up offerings. In other words, we haven't been handing a plate or a basket around. Many people have give online, and we can maybe put the uh, sign up for giving online, and you can scan the QR code or use the bank account, direct debit setup, or whatever you like. Or you can give through... Um, these envelopes, and there's a basket at the back, you just drop it in there as you leave church. And, uh, you know, it's, sometimes people wonder why we talk about money. And uh, a lot of people think, well, the church, you know, they get their money from the headquarters, and we don't. <laughs> God's very faithful to, to look after us. But all the money that we have comes from you. Um, it pays Mark and my salary, it pays Davy's salary, it helps support Lydia, it helps run the building and the live streams and all the general costs that we have as church, and then it, it supports your tea and coffees. <laughs> uh, it helps run the pantry, and uh, because those um, government grants that we had initially, they're, they're not there anymore. And all the other works that the church does come out of your pocket so if, if we don't receive those gifts that you give into the church, then the church is quite limited as to what it can do. So just if you wonder what we do with it all, it is vital that the giving keeps coming in. And uh, on the note of giving as well, is giving in the shoeboxes as well. And this is the national uh, week coming up is the National Collection Week. And that just means that that's the time to bring your boxes in. Uh, and if you haven't brought your box here today, King's is a um, collection point, and you can take your box there. Unfortunately, I haven't been given the actual date that they're coming with their big van to pick up. I inquired yesterday, and there's been a bit of a glitch in the system, so I, I don't know whether it's going to be this week or the beginning of next week. But just to ask you, if you can get your shoe boxes in, um, I know you've obviously brought some in today, but if, it, uh, if you could take them to King's throughout this week, then if they do come this week, they're there. And if they come the following week, that's also fine. But we're already um, equipped to box them up and let them go. Um, once they've gone, we, don't, we have to hold on to, to them for, till next year, which is a bit of a shame, and we don't always have the storage space. So just encouragement to get your boxes in this week. Okay, are you all doing good? Just want to say thank you as well. We are aware that these masks are, are a pain in the neck. <laughs> Even if you're not supposed to wear them around your neck, it can be a pain in the neck. Uh, but thank you for adhering to what we're required to do at the moment. We do appreciate that. It's, uh, it's not the most enjoyable thing, I know, but we do thank you. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Morag. And I think there's one or two kids in the house today, don't you? Kids, you look amazing. Come on up quickly and we'll pray for you. We've got a church job to do before we go. Do you know something? Hi, Katrina. That's okay. She'll come back from the... That's her cat. This is Kat and her sister's at the toilet, just so that you all know. It's okay. I know it's snowy. Right, stand here. Come on, Sila. Fantastic. You can... That's fine. Now, kids, just before we go, there's these amazing boxes here. And they are going to go to different children. Do we know the country? 
No, it's so exciting. Probably what? Probably Malaysia. You think Malaysia. You're probably totally right, Katrina. She is amazing. So I think what would be lovely is that there's children just like you all over the world that's going to get one of these. So I think it would be great if we could pray for these to go to the right children at the right time in the right place. Will we do that? Who feels really brave and would like to pray instead of me? If you'd like to try. Anybody? Do you want to try, Katrina? Uh, no, I, I don't have That's okay, right, okay. All uh, right, at least we can... Don't worry, don't worry. Let's all turn in line. We raise our hands to there so that we can just focus and just remember who we're praying for, okay? And can you help us, everybody? Okay, Father, we just thank you that in the prayers of these children, that these boxes will go to special children just like us. And that, Father, we just pray, as we've already said, that they would go to the right place, that it'd be at exactly the right time, and would fill a need of a praying heart of a child just now, that, Father, when they open it, they would know that you are real. And that, Father, I just pray, even in that moment, they would love you, serve you, and dedicate their lives to you. Father, bring hope through these boxes. We've just sang, you bring hope, you bring life, you bring light to the darkness. And just as our kids in our church bring light to, out to us, I pray that these boxes would bring light, hope, and love into the darkest places. In Jesus' name. And at least all the kids can shout amen. That's, I thought you were awake. Right. I'm going to quickly hand over to Damola, and he's going to tell us what we were doing last week. Right, Damola, do you want to go in that big space so you can be seen? Big loud voice on you go. Even in the Bible, the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 13, he does not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. We pray that we can ask God to all lead us on the right path, and when we make mistakes and when we get things wrong, we can say sorry. Ask God and trust Him to set us free. Well done, Damola. You're a champion. Okay, so do you want to be set on the right path as well? And when we trust God, He sets us free. What brilliant words. Are we ready to go? Yes. yes. Let's go and wait in the foyer. On you go, guys. Run, 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 run. Well, maybe walk, because there's lots of you. Okay. <laughs> Take your jacket, honey. <laughs> Have a good time. That's nice. Bye. <laughs> good. Ah, that's a happy sigh. Mum's got rid of her kids. <laughs> that was lovely. I can so really identify with that one. <laughs> You sit back and enjoy the rest of the service. Okay, I hope you're sitting comfortably. If you're not, give a shuffle and get yourself comfortable. Mark's going to bring the word that he's got on his heart today. So uh, let's just welcome him as he brings the word to us. Thank you. Thanks. We, we haven't got Davy this morning because him and Joanna are not feeling very well. So... Um, we're really missing him, because he usually carries the lectern. <laughs> but we miss him for all kinds of other reasons, too. Because <laughs> you're watching. I have to be careful what I say, because they're watching us online. Hi, Debbie. And Joanna. So we're in this uh, series. Hi, by the way, everybody. Lovely to see you. Uh, more people here for the first time, so it's just brilliant to, to have you here. And do be become part of church. If you're not just sort of on holiday and things, then we'd love you to connect. Um, so we're in the series at the moment talking about questions that Jesus asked and one or two also questions that God asks. So we've got Old and New Testament. But today then, and we've gone through so many questions, haven't we? It's been uh, countless, really. I've lost track of them all, but it's been thrilling. And there's so many more questions that Jesus asked. 
So uh, we've got a little more mileage in this. But this one, I think, is a really important one. Now, you can listen for the question uh, as it comes from Mark chapter 4, uh, from verse 35. Mark 4, 35. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? And when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. And suddenly the wind stopped. There was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have little, have no faith? <laughs> so what are the questions? And that's right. So great questions. Why are we afraid? Now I asked the questions at the end of the incident. So it was a kind of rhetoric, rhetorical one because uh, they wouldn't be afraid anymore now because the storm had gone. They wouldn't have no faith because they'd seen a miracle take place. But it was with, you know, Jesus often sort of preached with the wink in his eye, I think, and uh, sort of said, uh, you know, you're learning something from this, aren't you? There's, a, there's a, a message here. This isn't just me showing off. It isn't just me saving our lives. It's actually so that you can grow in your understanding. And therefore, we can also grow in our understanding. And you don't have to lift your hand, but you can if you want. Are you sometimes afraid? <laughs> yes. I think we would all, if we're honest, have to lift our hands to that because there are times in life which are scary. And not the Halloween kind of scary, but the real scary. And you don't know what to do. And the options seem to have run out. Or there's just that gripping fear. Sometimes it's irrational. Uh, but fear is a part of everyday life. Now, I've said it before, I used to be gripped by fear very often. I was a very fearful person. So I know what it's like to be set free from fear. And when I was set free from that irrational, gripping, sort of paralyzing fear that would come over me from time to time, and I determined that whenever I had the chance, I was going to help other people to get free from that as well. So this message this morning is very close to my heart because I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. And, and I just hate fear for what it does. These two questions are really inter intertwined, aren't they? So why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? There's a connection between fear and faith. And it's a very simple question, a connection, I think, is that when we have fear, then faith doesn't have the place to find its home. We can overcome fear through faith. So if you get fear, get faith rather, then you've already got the answer for fear. So this is good stuff because it's simple. Even I can understand it. And, uh, and, and, you know, what it's about is getting that healthy faith. It's not just an injection of faith, a zap from heaven of faith, but it's actually a healthy live by faith that changes our lives. And this is what I want to talk about today. And in Hebrews chapter 4, then it says this from verse 1. We're going to ask the question, what is faith? Not the faith, which is like a noun, it's, you know, we belong to the faith. But this is having faith, which is a verb, a doing word. So Hebrews 4, verse 1, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now, it's a long story about the context of this, but um, suffice to say that this illustrates so clearly, it defines so clearly 
that we can have all the good things of God available to us, the promise of entering his rest, that's peace, isn't it? Uh, and, and the assurance of the knowledge that God is with us, all those sort of lovely things that come with being a Christian. We don't actually have it unless we have the faith. Now, it also says of those who obeyed, so faith and obedience are tied together, but that's actually for another message. But the, the key thing is that faith kind of ignites our relationship with God or our, our Christian life. It's like the magic ingredient, or for those of you that are a bit more scientific, the catalyst. You know what a catalyst does? Who knows what a catalyst does? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like a third party, isn't it? Are you going to say the same thing? Tell you as well. It activates, doesn't it? Usually, it's sort of an inert thing. It, it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't get consumed but it activates. All of you driving cars have a catalytic converter. What a great name that is for a component in a car. Catalytic converter. And what that catalytic converter does is it converts the bad stuff that your engine's produced into not so bad stuff. It comes out the back, still a bit bad, but it kind of reduces the badness because it, it sort of sucks away the nasty components. But it lives forever. Well, until it kind of drops off and then you have a bill of a thousand odd pounds because it's got very... Um, anyway, I'm getting a bit sidetracked into Catholic converters. <laughs> but, but the thing is that a cat catalyst actually makes things happen. But you don't almost notice it, really. It's, it's introduction. Now, we've just had um, November the 5th. And uh, anybody like lighting... Did anybody light fireworks this year? See, the number of us that have the chance, yeah, one or two. <laughs> the number of us that have the chance to light fireworks is reducing, really, because, you know, it's sort of, ooh, be careful, it's dangerous. But I love lighting fireworks. And, you, you know, you've got a fire. I've got a firework in my garage I had for ages. I think I might have thrown it away now, Helen. But um, it didn't have a fuse. And I thought, one day, I'm just going to kind of stand back and, <laughs> and put a... <laughs> a lighter to it because I don't want to waste the firework. But I think we did actually throw it away. Or maybe Peter and I did it. But anyway, <laughs> you need a fuse to light a firework. If you don't have the fuse, the firework's no good. And it's the same if you don't have faith, then your religion, if you like, is no good. It's inert, it doesn't happen. We need that magic ingredient that makes it come into life. Uh, without faith, it's just an adherence to a set of beliefs. I don't want to be an adherent. I want to be a believer. You might like to say that to somebody next to you. I want to be, be a believer. There was a song about that, wasn't there? But, um, but here's another analogy to faith. It's like the sperm which fertilizes the egg in the womb of our heart. Now, that's cool, isn't it? We need faith for this thing that we decide to do in following Jesus to come to life. In Matthew chapter 9, uh, and that Matthew chapter 9 is, is full of faith stories, faith statements, because Jesus is going around healing all kinds of people, and he often says, uh, relates it to, to their faith. But here we are, Matthew 9, verse 20. It says, just then a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe, for she thought, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. Now that woman, uh, and, and the woman was healed at that moment. You see, Jesus' power was there, like his healing was in him. It was present. But it was only when the woman extended her hand to actually grab the, 
the bottom of his, his cloak that, and, and with the thought that if I can just touch Jesus, then I will be healed. It was only as she did that that it was all activated. The fuse was lit and the explosion happened and the woman was healed. See, faith is so important. So how do we get it? We want faith. Anybody want faith around here? Yeah, we want it. So there are uh, lots of scriptures that talk about receiving faith. As faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the Word of God is really important there. But I want to, to really focus in on, on knowing God. Because, you know, you can find formula all over the place. You can find st 10 steps to faith. Uh, to grow your faith. You can find all kinds of, you know, instructions. Some of them are good. Some of them are a bit, a bit naff, really, because, you know, it's like do these three things and you'll instantly have faith. Faith isn't like that. Faith is to do with our connection with God. And because God is faith, he's the author of faith, he's the source of faith, then we have to be connected to him in order to receive his real faith. Now, we all have faith of one sort or another. When he came in this building and he sat down, you didn't lift up the chair. I didn't see anybody doing that. Did anybody, you know, pick up the chair first and inspect it? Did you just kind of uh, check the screws underneath? Give the legs a little bit of a, a push and then think, right, I'm going to sit down slowly just in case. Ah, I'm okay. Most of you came in and said, hi, everybody, chatted away, and then you just went, dunk. <laughs> because we, we have faith in those things that we know are trustworthy. We have faith in things that we've tested before, you know. We're kind of very used to having chairs in buildings, and you kind of trust the people who look after the buildings that the chairs are not going to be wonky. So extend that now to our spiritual faith that comes from God. We have to know Him. We have to know about Him to be able to truly trust Him. Are you getting this? So, here's a few things that we can know about God first. You know, you know about somebody before you actually know them. I knew about Helen before I asked her out. I, uh, you know, I've been eyeing her up. So... <laughs> You know, I saw the way that she moved. Cool. So I saw the way that she spoke. Really cool. But I saw also the things that she spoke and what she spoke about. And I thought, I like this girl. And I was too shy to ask her, really. And so we kind of ended up, I think she was doing half the asking, actually. But anyway, we got there because, and, and she didn't done the same thing, didn't you? You sized me up as well. And. You do that with relationships. You don't just dive in. Oh, they look all right. <laughs> Will you marry me? Uh, you, you weigh it all up because, because you, have to, you have to know the person before you can really have a relationship with them. So it's the same with God. We have to know about God before we can really kind of know him. Do you know what I mean? So here's a few things that we know about God. We know the sort of guy that he is. We know what his values are. We know what his character is. We, we know how he behaves. We know how, how big he is, how great he is. We know what his attributes are. We know all of these things as we search the scriptures, as you look through the Old Testament and the New Testament, then you find out what God is like. When you talk to his people, like all of those around us, then we begin to find out what God is like because he's reflected in us. Not perfectly because there are imperfect Christians. Most of us are actually imperfect. But nevertheless, we reflect something of the nature of God. And when we worship God, then we're actually de de declaring out the things that we know about God. We're declaring about his greatness, you know, we've just been singing those great songs. You know, when you sing a worship song, and when we come to church on a Sunday morning, do you feel faith arising? You see, that's because we're actually telling ourselves, as well as appreciating 
to God what he is like. So those attributes of God make us feel, yeah, he's trustworthy. Um, so that's super, isn't it? Reading and learning from Scripture is a great way to grow in faith. But then we've got to extend that into actually knowing him, talking to him, receiving his love, making those things that we know are true active in our lives. So receiving his love and appreciating what Jesus did on the cross, the demonstration of that intense love for us. Learning about his presence. You know, the presence of God is indescribable, actually. It's an atmosphere thing. It's, it's something where you think, presence of God. You know, I've had one or two times when I've thought, I feel the presence of God. You better be careful. You know, sometimes it's, it's even a weighty, heavy, not heavy in a nasty way, heavy in a, a glory way, uh, sense. But I don't mess with God because he's almighty God. So, learning about his presence, receiving his gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which again is for another message, but they are so vital in our lives. Listening to his inner voice within. How good are we at that? Most of us not that good. But we need to learn to listen to that inner voice. Sometimes it's quiet, sometimes it speaks a bit louder, but often we have to stop to hear it. Take away all the chatter that goes on in our brain and all the stuff that's going on around us. And just stop for a minute so that we can learn to hear the quiet voice of God within us. And then there's experiencing his power and authority. That's, that's one of the things I was just talking about. In my experience, where you almost can't stand in the presence of God because, you know, you just have to fall to your knees. It's the only thing you can do. That's a real faith builder. And then there's a crucial one. Submitting to him in your heart. Obeying God. That's what following Jesus is really about. It's when we say, it's your way, God, not Frank Sinatra's way. <laughs> I just don't know why people play that at funerals. I did it my way. That would be the worst song ever that I would want to be played at my funeral. You can say, I did it God's way, Yes. I did it my way, what a waste of a life. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so not the Frank Sinatra doctrine, but the Holy Spirit inspired word of God, fire of, of, the, of the love of God doctrine, which is giving our heart to him, submitting wholeheartedly. Yeah, anyway. So we've got to get that right picture of who God is. If we've got a wrong picture of God, you know, it's often the way our fathers behave to us can create a bad picture of God. We've got to reprogram our understanding, find out the loving Father that God really is to us. Uh, we've got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12 verse 2 tells us that we can, we can be transformed as our minds are renewed. But we have to do the work. It doesn't just magically happen. We have to do the work. We find out from, from, from the Bible, many of you going through life groups at the moment and getting those strengthening of foundations. This is great to, to learn faith, to have a foundation for faith. That real healthy understanding of who he is. And uh, you know the Bible app. I'm a fan of the Bible app. On your phones, iPhone, Android phones, they have now achieved 500 million downloads. Give a cheer for the Bible app. <laughs> Happened this week. Half a billion people have the Bible app on, app on their phones. Isn't that great? So every day the Bible app comes up with a new a verse for today, and you can go on to the story bit and then click along, somebody will talk about it for a couple of minutes. But then there comes the devotional time. You can read a bit of that, and then you click read more, and then you... Anybody done that? They're great. Really great. I encourage you to use it because it's so easy, but it's also so spot on. This morning, I'd already prepared my message, 
But this morning, they had a quote from Archibald Chambers, great, you know, Christian writer, said, faith is the deliberate confidence in the character of God whose ways you may not understand at the time. Isn't that a great quote? I'll say it again. Faith is a deliberate confidence in the character of God whose ways you may not understand at the time. You know, we, we decide to have confidence in who God is, even though we don't understand what's going on and what he appears to be doing. People, when the tough going gets tough, sometimes forsake God, you know. I can't understand it. Like, oh, I'm having a really tough day. I don't think I want to come to church. You know, if you're getting a tough day, get to church. Because, because it's a no-brainer. You need faith. <laughs> if you're not feeling very well, as long as it's not COVID and you're going to spread it to everybody else, come to church if you possibly can. Because you're more likely to get healed at church than you are sitting in your seat at home feeling sorry for yourself. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so what was I saying about that? Um, we, we uh, yeah, it's when we face challenges, isn't it? When we face challenges, those are the times that we need God. So run into him, not away from him. And, and you know, that's, it seems so obvious, and yet it's not what we do. Things get tough, and we get downhearted. The last thing we do then is pray. We need to reprogram our thinking so things get tough, we go to God. Uh, here's a great little quote. Uh, you all know it. Anyway, a friend in need... Oh, I gave away the punchline. A friend in need is a friend... And God is a friend in hard times, in the times of need. So run into him. And actually, our faith is strengthened in times of adversity. In James 1, verse 2 onwards, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. When your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. When your faith is tested, it becomes strong. It becomes faith that will endure. And then you'll be able, because you've got what you need. You're complete. Is that good? Um, just uh, at the moment, uh, like over the last week or two then, um, Helen's mentioned once or twice about this house that we bought in Kidford to turn into a holiday let, a bit of a business venture. Now, um, an il illustration of, um, of, of uh, sort of adversity is that um, Helen has allowed me to wreck the place. <laughs> <laughs> so what have we done? We've wrecked everything. It was kind of nice. We had a kitchen. We had bathroom, we had an ensuite bathroom, and uh, you know, you could walk in and you think, oh, this is quite a nice place. Well, yeah, but that's when you look beneath the surface. But you know, it was okay. But we went in, we being me and Davi and Jack and Graham, it's been a great help. Then we went in and we wrecked the place, we pulled the bath out, we pulled the showers out, somebody's looking for something down here. We have... Uh, pulled half the kitchen out, there's no floor covering, and, um, you know, the tiles are off the wall, it looks a mess. But the thing is that Helen has faith that I'm going to put it back together. <laughs> <laughs> See, when things look a mess, it's not necessarily a bad thing, because it's the opportunity for God to put things back together. He's very able to do that. And Helen seems to think I'm able to do it as well. <laughs> Time will tell. <laughs> but you get the situation, you get the message here. You know, when stuff goes wrong, God's at work. He's just wrecking the place so he can rebuild it stronger. <laughs> right, finally, as we're coming down to land, Jesus spoke about the power of mustard seed faith. Anybody seen a mustard seed? Well, it's really small. It's tiny. So, he says, all you need is faith the size 
of a mustard seed, and he can do amazing things. How can that be true? It's because faith, like a mustard seed, gets planted in the ground, and it gets looked after, it gets nurtured, and then it grows into something magnificent. We've all got our seed of faith. Nobody's, you know, like the moment that you say yes to Jesus, doink, there's your seed of faith. So you take the seed of faith, and then you start to nurture it. Within that seed is so much power, so much potential. But it's our job then to put it into a healthy heart, a, 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 a um, submitted heart, tender heart, and allow God to, to work in there. And then he does amazing things. Let's just finally think about some of the things that faith does, the power of faith in God. Well, first of all, we can flourish in our calling. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says, For by it, for, by, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It's the mustard seed gift of God. I added mustard seed, but it works. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. When that faith seed grows, then we can activate his plan in our lives and do something worthwhile. Second one, we can step out in confidence, living life in partnership with Jesus. We don't always feel him, do we? But faith carries us through all of those circumstances. It's what you know that makes you grow. So get that knowledge of who God is, uh, that sort of nurturing and feeding faith so that you can step out in confidence. Next one, we can move out in the supernatural power of God. Oh, yeah. The Holy Spirit can work in and through us. We can see those gifts of the Holy Spirit flow. We can see miracles taking place before our very eyes. People being healed. Provision appearing. Con con um, conditions. What is not conditions? I've lost the word. Uh, stuff that happens around circumstances. Circumstances changing all of a sudden. That's what happens as we step out in faith, leading to the supernatural power of God being released within us. And Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, the disciples are trying to do some, some stuff to get people healed in their mind. And uh, Jesus said to them in verse 20, Matthew 17, you don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. He didn't pull his punches. I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. And we don't need to move Criffel into the Solway because it's doing a good job where it is. But he's actually overstating the thing to say nothing will be impossible. All you need is a mustard seed of faith, planted, growing, flourishing. And then lastly, our walk with God becomes exciting. You know, uh, when people think about Christianity and Christians and church, they usually think that it's all about being boring. It's all about, you know, what you can't do. I found that so not the case. You know, when you walk with God and you step out in faith, life becomes exciting. And uh, I want to live an exciting life. I don't know about you. Anybody like boring? We like exciting. So let's grow in faith. <laughs> we like Formula One and stuff like that. Yeah, let's pray, shall we? Anybody like to grow in faith? Pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you've established your kingdom in a particular way which is absolutely incredible when we see what it, what, it, what, it, what it actually achieves. And so, Lord, as we realize this morning, we need to grow in faith. And, Lord, we rise to the challenge that just like those disciples, as you were saying, you know, you're so scared and you had so little faith. But we know that after that, they were transformed because, because they were challenged 
but they were so encouraged. And so today, Lord, we've been challenged, but we're encouraged to, to grow in faith. Help us, Lord, in our unbelief. Help us in our faith. Help us to grow. Help us to put those ingredients into our lives which enable us to flourish in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And just before the worship team come back up, and you could be getting ready just now, guys, if you will, then uh, I want to speak to anybody. And, you know, you've not sort of started that walk of faith for the first time. You've maybe not received your mustard seed yet. And that's a very easy thing to do. I mean, it's, it's easy, but it's not easy in a way. It's easy because it's, a, it's simple, it's straightforward. It's just saying, yes, God, I want to be your follower. Yes, Jesus, I want you in my life. Yes, Holy Spirit, I want to be filled with you. But actually what it means is that you're surrendering your life. You're laying down your agenda and you're saying, Lord, I'd rather have your agenda instead. It's not an add-on to life. It's a goal, a focus of our life. And, you know, I feel like God is challenging. One or two people here this morning and you've you know, perhaps sat on the fence or you've been observing from a distance and you may be online watching us as well. And, you know, you've thought, this is interesting. I'm fascinated by the River of Life Church, fascinated by Christianity and other churches and things. But it's time to take the step. It's time to move in faith. A simple step of faith that said yes. That's all it is. But you know what that involves. And then God leads you. You see, he gives you the, the faith to move the next step and the next step and the next step. So I want to pray with you, give you a chance with me to receive the Lord Jesus. Receive his faith and start a new life with him. And Lord God, I thank you that you love me. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. And right now I want to surrender to you. I say yes to your call. So receive me now, I pray. Come into my life. Make me new. I make you my Lord and I receive you as my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Easy. So if you prayed that for the first time, then please do talk to me or to Helen or to one of the hosts or somebody that you know here, and we'll help you on your way as you begin your new walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Marvelous. Mm -hmm. Right, guys. Are we missing anybody? Oh, more eggs had to go across, hadn't she? So uh, it's just the two of you. Yeah. Are you going to finish? You can take the mic if you want. <laughs> it's all right. So, uh, yeah, it's just the two of you. Let's stand. It's all of us. Exactly. Good response. We are the worship team. They just happen to lead us. So let's be the worship team. Let's lift him high. Let's appreciate him as we close our service today.
my God, that is who you are. You are here, moving every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. Promise keeper. Yeah, you don't find many of those around. He's the one and only, and he's well worth knowing. Thank you for joining us this morning. Just want to uh, remind you that we have uh, a place where the hub of miracles starts. It's called a prayer meeting. And we have one in Kings at six o'clock tonight. If you want to join us, you are more than welcome. And also a date for your diaries, 4th of December. It's a Saturday night at half past six. Our sisterhood open up to everybody for a, a Christmas get-together. Just simply Christmas, uncomplicated, presented to you and for you to come and join in. That's the 4th of December, uh, 6.30. Yeah, I think I've got that right. Good. Here. 
Always here. I don't know when it finishes. <laughs> when we're done. <laughs> it's good to see you. Stay for tea and coffee. Say hello to somebody. It's good to have you. We'll see you next week, if not before. Bless you.